Okay, so our next speaker is um, <clears throat> going to talk about new IT and online paradigms in educational institutions. May I invite Mr. Jamie Roy Doxey, CEO of ESAB Escola Superior Alberta do Brasil. Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm pleased to be here with you all at this summit. And uh, I must say, after four hours this morning, I learned a little bit about PowerPoint presentations. So I hope, uh, I hope I'm hope i okay. Uh, I'm a sociologist with a master's and doctoral degree in Inter-American Studies from the University of Miami. I represent Izabi a private organization offering quality undergraduate and graduate online education for nearly, nearly 20 years. We are located in Vila Velha, Espírito Santo, Brazil. Espírito Santo is uh, uh, the Holy Ghost, but there's not much holy about our state. Uh, I have lived and worked in North, Central, and South America, formerly an exchange student to Greece, a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer to Costa Rica. I'm a retired professor from the Federal University of Spirit Santo, where I taught research methodology and ethics in graduate programs. I trained and worked with Dr. Carl Rogers in humanistic and cross-cultural training. I now work with Izabi and administer a 40-acre Atlantic Rainforest Reserve. I also play basketball with the Brazilian veteran selection team 75 years and growing. It's the first one. Brazil is famous for its cities, beaches, tropical forests, and beautiful women. Carnival parades. Samba and football are its trademarks. More recently, and our soccer players helped fill stadiums here in England and throughout Europe. More recently, corruption, urban and gender violence, uh, drug trafficking, jailed officials and politicians, uh, destruction of forests and Amazon jungles have dominated international media. A serious economic recession and a growing national debt, difficult efforts to finance basic services and public policies so urgently needed to face inequalities in education, health, and basic sanitation. In Brazil, the concentration of wealth and income disparities contribute to depleting a once fast-growing middle class. High rates of unemployment and illiteracy pose serious restrictions for regaining economic growth. In 1917, an alarming 11% of all youth between 15 and 17 years of age is neither employed or in school. Children and adolescents are simply not in school, and many who are drop out. And there are not enough public schools, and poor teaching salaries persist at all levels, levels of education. Nevertheless, education is regarded as essential for entering and advancing in the workforce. Those with a college diploma can earn almost three times more than someone with a high school degree. Rapid expansions of the private sector in undergraduate and online education are responses to demands of the marketplace. Online prices are cheaper than attending private school classes. For years, Izabi has directed its tuition weights and course organization towards the demand for greater qualification of professionals with university degrees, and more recently towards individuals seeking undergraduate degrees through online education. And how do we do this? Well, we were founded in about 20 years ago, we're located in the southeast region of Brazil, uh, 
graduate and undergraduate courses, we have 300 and doesn't work. 360 courses. We have 12,000 in this past year active students with another 18,000 government approved vacancies. The Brazilian government controls online education very closely. All of our students must take exams, physically take exams in one of our uh, one of our partnerships in our institutional contracts with 512 uh, participants. Isabi is one of the few faculties in Brazil that have achieved the highest rating of the Ministerio of Education and Culture, uh, averaging five points over the last years. I won't, I won't talk, give you a, a, a geographic lesson. You know, Brazil's a big country uh, with a large population. To meet a demand for under, undergraduate and graduate courses, we have 512 partnerships throughout the, the, the country. We're located in that green part of the little part of the, mount, the, the, the map. And Azabi has its own learning program and a platform registered in the National Institute for Intellectual Property. Uh, I won't go, go into this, but many of you know about Moodle and Blackboard. Uh, they're examples of open source software, Moodle with two, two integrated platforms. Uh, Blackboard has a third one, administrative environment. And our platform, we own our own platform and have been developing. We have five integrated environments in the same data bank. We have the students, the teachers, the administrative and learning environment, and the environment for, for partners at the uh, 512 polos, and the environment for undergraduate classes, physical classes. These, these uh, environments are all inexchangeable. We have mainly through three organizational navigators, and we have a lot, about 520 environments, uh, links, and subvironments uh, in Java and cloud, and all in cloud computing. We use international guidelines. Unfortunately, don't use the European ones. We need to get get ourselves uh, in uh, in line with that. But I doubt if we're, we're much uh, out of it. For, uh, the organizational navigators permit administrators, students, and and professors to travel between the various levels of, of uh, education: the the graduate, the postgraduate level. Uh, the undergraduate level and the, in the classroom. Uh, we also have control panels. These control panels are very interesting because they allow us to, to, to have in, in indicators, operational indicators, uh, dropout rates, payment information, uh, data source for various reasons uh, for evaluating uh, programs and courses and also the professors. Uh, we, ha we have all the students online, and they can access their payment schedules and, and are able to handle all the things they need to, to, to work with our administrative people. This integration is an automatic information regarding uh, uh, the, the basic uh, uh, concepts. Anything we need is interconnected, and we, it's available any place throughout the world. We have students in Africa and some students in, in uh, uh, Brazilian students in, in the United States. The platform permits all departments and sectors to manage their processes and share information. Uh, we, we can get into the library. We, we have information from, from uh, the tutors and we have information from the people who are evaluating the uh, end, of, end of the course uh, term papers. The management and control of the student information, therefore, uh, allows us to know who's, on, who's, who's with us, how many people have dropped out. We have a dropout rate below 10 percent. It's an average of 5.5 percent in all courses at all levels. And so we know who our students are by state. We know their economic profile. 
uh, we know them where they are in the course, and we know uh, we we have various reports and evaluations that are able to be compiled by our, our academic staff. But we're not satisfied. We need to go further. We need to learn some new technologies. One of these technologies is the uh, exam process that we'd like to do using facial recognition. And we're presently negotiating with the Brazilian government to uh, uh, get accepted an experimental process here of, of uh, having the students answer their exams in their homes instead of traveling to all those uh, distant, uh, sometimes in the Amazon and in the north of Brazil, the students have to travel two days to take a test. So we're, we'd like them to have a, uh, if any of you are developing anything in the area of uh, facial recognition or have suggestions, we'd, we'd certainly like to talk to you. Uh, it's a big country. We have a lot of demands for educational courses, and we need to test it all our students. Thank you very much.